This is our video about line convention, and so far we haven't talked about lines very much other than to say when we first are drawing our construction lines to make them thin. But now we're going to kind of start talking more specifically about different kind of lines as we get into more technical drawings. And the first thing is they vary in style, meaning dash, solid, and thickness depending on what we're going to do with them. You have a picture like this on the handout I gave you, and what you should do is label each one of these lines as I go through them on the slides. So that you're filling in your notes and glue, glue the handout in your notebook and then fill these out, label the lines. Very lightly drawn lines are construction lines. These are very, very faint, and you don't have to go back and erase them, but you can erase them later. Object lines, these are the outlines of your shape. They're called object lines, and they're thick and dark. Usually the best practice is to start off by drawing them lightly, and then once you're sure you've got them in the right place, then come back and darken them up. One of the biggest mistakes I see students make when they start sketching is that they draw way too dark early on in the project, and then it's hard to erase it when they mess up. Hidden lines represent something that I can't actually see from the front. So for instance, on this piece, there's a hole in there, but I can't see it from this front view. They're dashed to show that they're back in there and you can't actually see them on this part. Center lines show the center of circles and holes. Any kind of cylindrical hole or circle like this. They're a long, short, long dash. And they're half as thick as an object line. So about medium thickness, long, short, long. The short's always in the center. When I do it in a circle, notice that this is a center line and this is a center line, and they meet to make a little cross in the middle. They extend far enough out to go across the circle on each one of these directions on their long portion. Section lines are where we've actually come in here and cut part of this off so that we can see the inside. These are parallel lines that are just showing that that's the textured inside material. We'll talk about those more later on. Break lines is where we actually cut it. It's a little jagged line there. Now when we start dimensioning later on, we're not going to dimension yet, but we're going to start talking about them. Dimension lines are these lines right here where you put the dimension that tell how long something are. They have an arrow on each end and they're about medium weight. These lines that extend from the picture are called extension lines and they're used when we're dimensioning. And again, these are um, going to be something we do later on when we start dimensioning. Notice though that the extension lines never touch the pit figures. There's a little gap. Long break lines. For instance, this piece is really 12 inches long. Why wouldn't we go ahead and draw it 12 inches long? Well, basically because that would take up a lot of paper and there's nothing interesting happening here. It's just a long cylinder. So we show these break lines showing we cut out a big boring part here in the middle just by using this little jagged lightning bolt shape. And leader lines. This happens to be three circles drawn on top of each other like a little stack of cylinders. And these are so that we can show the dimensions. This little symbol right here, a circle with a slash through it, means diameter. So that's saying this one has a diameter of 2 inches, this one has a diameter of 0.5, and so on. Notice they have a little arrow here, the leader line comes out, and then it's got a little tail that's horizontal. Notice all of them have that with the little tail that's horizontal. The little horizontal tail should be about one square long when you draw them. These are our guidelines. There is a little bit more to our line part, and here it is. Sometimes lines line up on top of each other, and so we have to know which one we're going to put on top. Basically, it starts off with object lines are always the ones we're going to see. If they fall over the top of something underneath, they, we still see the object lines. Hidden lines will show up before center lines, and cutting plane lines, they cut through everything else. So here's an example. Here's our front view, and right here in my top view, this should be a dash line for the circle underneath, but the object line lays over the top of it. A nice way to think about this is if it's a thick line going over 
a thick object line over a thinner hidden line, it's basically just covered up that thinner hidden line underneath. That's all there is to lines.